welcome to my youtube channel those of us who are joining us today for the first time karibuni sana feel free to share like and subscribe for those of us who've uh, subscribed and have been asking questions thank you so much for reaching out and i believe and i hope that uh, our interaction has been helpful to you and uh, your questions has been answered according to uh, how you wanted so it's been a while since i recorded but today i just felt i should share with us some of uh, the things that we need to have in mind whenever we are planning for nursing training we know that nursing training is regulated by the nursing council of kenya and um, according to its regulation all the trainings commencement are march april and uh, september october so right now i know most of us if we had applied previously whether in a government owned institution whether in a mission institution or a private institution or other ministries that support nursing training i believe by now maybe you've gotten communication of your admission process and you're in the process of learning for your admission. So I thought it would be very important for us to go through some of the requirements that are needed. And one of the key requirements that is very crucial to your training is finances. We find most students or applicants are qualified for training, but because of one re reason or another, they're not able to meet, to meet their financial obligations. It becomes a challenge for them to undergo the training. So I felt even as you're planning for admission, it is important to know and to expect what is required of you so that you plan in advance and you're able to meet the financial obligation so this will be a part series presentations that i will share with us and today we will start off with the government owned institution and we know the government owned institution for nursing training is amtc so i have broken down the fee structure for kmtc for both uh, diploma students and certificate students what we commonly regard as krchn and krn programs so we are going to go into the details of the fee structure explain a few things so that you're able to understand even as you plan for your finances you know what is a priority and what is not a priority so that you allocate funds accordingly um then subsequent uh, presentations will have other institutions so we'll follow maybe by mission institutions or private institution and if luck will be on our side we'll be able also to tackle institutions that are run by other ministries or other government bodies so let's go straight ahead to uh, the presentation on the MTC fee structures and then mentioned we are going to look at both the KRCHN and KRN programs uh, because in KMTC these programs their cost is the same it's only now that in the diploma programs what we refer to as KRCHN is three years and KUS KECHN which is the Kenya Certificate um, Training for Nursing is two years but other details or other requirements especially the financial obligation is the same um, so from what you can be able to see for all or for both courses you will require your registration fee the registration fee is what is outlined in the fee structure and it is 2000 shilling which is payable per year in a year we have two semesters so we are going to break down the semester so we have first semester and second semester so that now we, if you pay it and it's it's advisable that it is paid within the first semester so once you pay it in the first semester it is not payable in the second semester and then we have activity fee so in a year it's 2000 we have the examination fee in a year is 10,000 we have library and ICT services um, this is the use of library services the use of internet or Wi-Fi within the institution it is 4,000 per year and then we have the tuition fee which is uh, 30,000 per year it is payable in installment that is in first semester is 15 the second semester is 15 then we have research and development fee because you'll be required to do some basic research towards your final year so the cost incurred for that is 5000 we have transport fee this transport fee is for academic purposes only or when you are transported from institution to your clinical placement area and it is not the transport fee that you'll be using daily when you'll be attending your classes so it is important for us to be able to understand understand about this fee so that it is clear that at the end of the day as much as you've paid this transport fee within the fee structure you'll be required to have your own subsistence money that in form of transport fee especially if you're staying outside the campus uh, you're not being hosted within the hostels then you may need to set aside some extra money for your transportation then there's maintenance fee this is the fee that is incurred to maintain the institution properties uh, so that is allocated at 10,000 per year then we have student identity card uh, which is 700 from the fee structure is i indicated 700 per year so once you make a total of all that details we have for first semester is 
41,700. Second semester, 39,000. So the total fee per year comes down to 8,700. So for those of us who are joining for the first time, you may, if you have uh, enough sources of fund, you can pay for the whole year 80,700. If you're not in a position to pay that amount of money, then you can pay for first semester. That is 41,700. Again, remember, that is only the fee towards your tuition. There are other fees uh, that it is important for us to know because sometimes we plan only with what is allocated on the fees track because the admission letter or admission documents is quite a huge document. You may miss out on some of the charges. So I have broken down some of other charges that are not within the main fee structure, but the important charges that will enable your learning to be efficient and effective so that now you won't be worried now and then when you think about financials. So we have, so for other charges, I've categorized them into four major categories. So we have personal uh, costs. So these are other personal costs that are not incurred within the fee structure. We have the hostel fee. So this is dependent. Huh? So if you're being hosted within the host, I mean, within the campus, huh? you're using the hostel for the campus, it is 10,000 per year. So some campuses, depending in which campus you go to, you may need to inquire further. They require you to pay 10,000 upfront. For some campuses, they split that into two so that you have 5,000 for first semester and another 5,000 for the second semester. And then you have the daily transport fee, what I had mentioned before. It is, this fee is separate from the transport fee that is on the fee structure. The daily transport fee is the fee that you will incur, especially if you're not staying within the campus. Let's say you're accommodated outside, whether it is another hostel or you're renting your own room or whether you're being hosted by your family or a relative you will incur some cost especially if it is a distance from where the institution is a place where you cannot walk then you may need to factor in the transport cost you may need to factor in also the meals so for those of us also who will be staying within the hostel there is a program called pay as you eat so the hostel fee that you're paying of 10,000 is only for accommodation meals are not inclusive so you find within the institutions that the catering services are outsourced at a student friendly service costs so you may also need to factor in the cost of meals separately from the hostel fee then of course your own pocket money so that is dependent on personal use and then the other important fee is the nursing council fee so once you have been admitted in an institution you will be required to be indexed this is what we call indexing by the nursing council of kenya where the nursing council regards you as a bona fide nursing student it is done within the first month of your admission so the nine thousand 400 is very crucial even as you're planning for your fee and that's why i said don't look only on the fee that is allocated on the fee structure this is also important so if you are paying for first semester fee only you have your first semester that is 41700 rather you will need to also include the nursing indexing fee of 9400 other charges we have the student representative council so it is a one-time fee of 1500 uh, payable cash so don't pay it together with your fee come with it in your mpesa or cash then you pay it you'll be given a receipt as you pay for the nursing council fee i also need to mention that you need to have it in your mpesa don't pay it together with your fee have it in your mpesa so that when you'll be indexing you will use the nursing council pay bill and you'll be given directions on how to make a payment of the same and then we have uh, the skills lab skills lab fee is 1500 for nursing so for the skills lab you'll be given manuals manuals that will be used for the skills lab sessions so before you're released in to the clinical areas you will be required to undergo some skills lab training sessions and you will require manuals to use for the same so putting all that together you may find that in a year the cost of nursing training will be more than the 80 700 allocated on the fee structure. extra money for that may be dependent on what are your personal effects what are the other costs that you will be incurred but the key cost it is the 1500 for skills lab, SRC 1500 nursing council fee of 9400. So when you include all that, you, you will almost come to about 100,000 per year. So it is important for you to have that in mind. Most of them are incurred annually. Now, apart from the nursing council, which is the indexing fee is one time, skills lab also is one time fee, SRC is one time fee. So if you pay them for your first year, you will not pay them again in your second and third year. However, upon completion of your training, there 
are other charges that will apply you will need to pay for your nursing council of kenya exam licensing fee so this is an examination that you will do after you've certified the examination board of your institution that you're qualified to, to be licensed so once you complete that exam and your name is submitted to the nursing council you will need to pay examination licensing fee sometimes it keeps on changing so you may need to update yourself with the nursing council portal and see how much is the fee by the time eligible to do or to sit for that exam so once you pay for the exam and you've passed you will be required to pay what you call a license share fee so this is where it's a fee again paid to the nursing council through their portal so that now you are able to access your license once you access your license that license has a renewal fee annual renewal fee of 1500 so whether you're practicing or not so long as you want to be retained in the register of training nurses then you may need to pay for the annual licensing fee of your license so i felt it is important to share this because you find some uh, parents guardian or even students especially those who support themselves they're not aware of these other charges so once they begin their uh, training or programs they become stuck because they had not foresee or they had not understood well at the financial obligations i think i've shared the very basic information that is adequate for you to make a decision for your planning purposes and i hope to see you in our next video with obligations in a mission facility and maybe and a third one in a private facility should you have further questions please don't hesitate to reach out to me i will be happy to answer your questions or guide you or direct you in the right uh, place or channel where you can get an assistance i wish you all the best for those of us who've um, qualified to be admitted for the training i wish you all the best in your training looking forward for you to join us in the field and uh, let's grow together as nurses bye <music>